In this video, I'll be demonstrating an extension of the real number system using nilpotent vectors a and b, which are given the following properties. a and b both square to zero and are called nilpotents, and when they multiply with each other to form bivectors, the sum of ab and ba is said to be one. Then, if we apply the formal vector inner product definition, we see that the inner product of a and b is one half. More properties can also be derived from the given properties. The bivectors are seen to square to themselves and are therefore called idempotents. It's also seen that the bivectors AB and BA annihilate each other when multiplied together. This new vector basis used to extend the real numbers is called the canonical nilpotent basis. Using this basis, we can define this extended system. This extended system is defined by the span of the canonical nilpotent matrix. Note the row and column decomposition. This will be used in a moment to define numbers in this new system. Let's now consider a geometric number G in this extended system. G is defined by the linear combination of nilpotent vectors and idempotent bivectors where the scalars are real numbers. This sum can be represented by matrix multiplication, but what is this matrix of G? Well, it's just the matrix of the scalars over the canonical nilpotent basis. This implies that the manipulation of geometric numbers G and H is equivalent to the manipulation of their 2x2 two two matrices in the canonical nilpotent basis. To complete this new extended number system, three conjugation rules are added. But before I show them, let's consider the even and odd decomposition of a geometric number in this system. We say there's an odd part, G sub O, and an even part, G sub E, where the odd part is given by the nilpotents and the even part is given by the idempotents. Now we'll look at the new conjugations. The first is reversion, denoted by the dagger. It reverses the order of vector-vector products, meaning that it does not conjugate the odd part of a geometric number, but it changes the even part. The change may be subtle, but notice that the scalars are now associated with the opposite bivectors. When reversion is applied to two geometric numbers, the reversion is applied to each number after reversing the order of multiplication. The next conjugation is called inversion, denoted by a raised minus sign. It negates the sign of each nilpotent vector, meaning that it does not conjugate the even part of a geometric number, but it fully negates the odd part. Note the decompositions of the even and odd parts of G. The third and final conjugation is mixed conjugation, where both reversion and inversion are applied. This is denoted by the asterisk, and has the following properties. The most important results are the simple definitions given for the trace and determinant of G. Remember from linear algebra that the trace is the sum of the diagonals, and for 2x2 two two matrices, the determinant is the product of the main diagonal minus the product of the cross diagonal. Now that these conjugations have been defined, we can now find a good representation for multiplicative inverses. We first multiply both the top and bottom with the mixed conjugate of G. This expands into a very calculable form. Therefore, a geometric number G in this extended system has a well-defined inverse if and only if its determinant is not zero. For those who are wondering, there is an even odd decomposition of geometric number products as well. And finally, let's take a look at the symmetry decomposition of a geometric number product. Just like any other geometric algebra, we can represent the geometric product as a sum of a symmetric part and a scalar part. That's all for now. As a recap, I introduced an extension to the real number system by including two nilpotent vectors. The resulting basis was called the canonical nilpotent basis. Finally, I showed forms of a geometric number in this new system. In the next video, I will talk about the geometrical interpretation of this extension.